Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about figuring out if someone's the real deal. So let's get into it. So the question in question was what is the hi Frederick, what is the quickest way to tell if a software engineer slash programmer is the real deal? I would love to uh, do me a favor guys put in the comment sections if you think I'm the real deal and why you think I am the real deal or why you think I'm not the real deal just curious because I'm gonna give you what I usually do uh, to figure this sort of thing out so the way that I figure out if someone is the real deal is usually down to one part that uh, I look at the depth of understanding a person has of the, the realities of being a software developer. Posers or people who usually have a very shallow understanding of things uh, within IT are usually the sort of people where they know the words and sort of like what the tool does and they also usually hold the popular opinion of other people. Sometimes it's actually a little bit funny guys where I do interviews with people where you know the they, they will simply regurgitate the sales pitch slogan of the tool that they are using or the common trend like what is uh, good agile practices and why is scrum so useful and so forth and you can sort of almost hear like it's almost like you, you, you can you can hear the segment, oh this is like a term, if I google the thing that that person just said I'm probably gonna find a few blogs where that exact phrasing is used because they've just sort of as a person who is very religiously inclined or someone who is like very very indoctrinated in a way of thinking they're not actually doing their own thinking they just regurgitate what somebody else has told them is true and then they hold that as personal belief and that is the key thing belief and the beautiful part about belief is that it's very easy to poke hole in beliefs that are not anchored in something that you can't uh, well where you basically can't disprove it which is the problem with religious belief where like it's you can't really do much there but what's beautiful about it when it comes to worshipping things or like you thinking in that manner within say software development or politics or anything like that is that it's easier for you to bring that you can actually pr present concrete questions or concrete proof that disproves or sort of pokes hole at the uh, at the person's argument so an example would be where I talk to software developers who will for example talk about well let's say front-end why is Vue such a great thing or why is Svelte the next best th biggest thing or why is SBAs the big thing etc so they will talk about all these sort of trendy terms and so forth and then all you really have to ask which is my favorite question is could you compare React, Angular, Svelte, Vue, and so forth, and sort of talk. Uh, tell me, what are you? What do you see as pros and cons with the different ways of working? Another one that is a favorite of mine is: uh, Can you give me an instance where it is better to use promise chaining, uh, the traditional one, versus using, say, async await? Under what circumstances would you use CSS in JS versus regular CSS, and do you prefer? Do you have a like a CSS structure that you'd like to follow? Do you use BEM, object-oriented CSS, Max, or do you only do something like CSS CSS modules? And what are the benefits and consequences of that choice of those choices? How do you implement theming in an efficient way without bloating your CSS style sheet? Or do you take that hit and go with a simpler approach? These sorts of questions are perfect because, in my opinion at the very least, now this is just front end, but we can go back end as well, where you can talk about object oriented uh, programming and talk about composition versus inheritance and when do you do make the distinction between when is an inheritance chain too long and when is composition a better approach. MVC, what do you, how do you think about MVC? At what point do you 
make the decision to go with, say, a layered architecture, the standard one, versus using something like CQRS or event sourcing. Is event sourcing a good, a good solution for uh, a standard application? And if so, uh, why? And not just simply using something simpler. Uh, there are these sort of like I to call them like these experience types of questions where most not not all of those of course I don't feel bad if you you know didn't really know all of that stuff or like so forth because these are the sorts of questions that I like to ask uh, candidates who are a little bit more experienced and of course there are junior levels of those as well as I was saying like the promise for example things like that where you ask a person something that is not Googleable something that is not going to be written on a uh, blog article somewhere. And the problem with these questions is that the only way that you could answer that question is if you've done your own thinking, your own living, your own experiences. And a lot of those questions, I can ask other questions as well, where I will guarantee you that you and I will have be, po be able to have a conversation about that if you have done the work, it's just as I have. But it's only going to make sense to you, for example, let's talk about theming in CSS. If you've never thought about the complexities of, say, adding something like dark mode to a website and how that impacts testing, and it basically creates a situation where you know how to maintain two sets of visual regression tests and two sets of uh, flow basically and the overall complexity that, that adds and then uh, we don't even have to go like really deep and talk about performance impacts and so forth and like uh, how, how to do this in an efficient way. Uh, it, it really is only possible for you to reason and talk about those sorts of things if you've done the work. If you've cha fail, faced those sorts of challenges, and so to figure out if a software developer is, a re is the real deal, it's actually really simple. You just have to t have someone who is the real deal, and have them ask questions related to the same damn thing everybody is basically doing. The NBC thing I was talking about. Literally every single project under the sun has a discussion about how do you do NBC, what is correct. Uh, the correct way of doing MVC. You can ask things about unit testing. How much mocking should you use? Under what circumstances? When do you want to hit the database and do a full integration test versus mocking and stubbing and so forth? These sorts of questions, my friend. There is no one who is faking or who isn't the real deal who will be able to answer that in, in a satisfying way. And trust me when I say this, guys, I have talked to senior level software developers with 20 years of experience who are posers. The only reason they have survived as long as they have is that they have low-end projects where they've been able to hide the fact that uh, get a, get a, around the fact that they don't actually know how to do serious professional-grade software development. But it, it hasn't been a necessity, and that's why I tell people that you have to make a you have to understand that there are different levels of programming or like working on projects of different scale. It's similar to you mean it's a different. There's a difference between working on a skyscraper and working on a shed. And you can make an, a lucrative business building sheds or like small time uh, dinghies or canoes or some, something like that. And you can be a ship builder or like uh, someone who designs and builds sky, skyscrapers. It's really down to like what level. It's just that uh, we, we have a hard time distinguishing between the different skill levels. And usually at the major leech, fan companies, high end super systems, there, uh, the requirements are that you need to know quite a lot of different things like a senior software developer, a true senior as I call them. Guys, these are people who are so good and have done so many things that they're like this question some people ask me like, oh, are you a front end developer or a back end developer? It doesn't matter to these people. They can build the entire system usually. So what I want you to take away from this is that uh, Spotting the quickest way to spot a poser or like some a programmer who is the real deal, in my opinion, is to ask them experience questions and hear them reason about why they pick one approach over another, and that kind of creates another problem for you. If you don't know what a good software developer looks like, you won't be able to ask those sorts of questions because you won't be able and you won't be able to evaluate the answer. 
that is the key thing because a senior level poser uh, who have like 20 years of experience they will talk with the confidence of someone who really knows their shit but it's the same phenomenon if you take someone who is convinced that they I mean guys it, this is the whole problem with charisma and not understanding the difference between someone who talks a big game and someone who actually knows some stuff because that's how politicians and how like snake oil salesmen like that's what they do that's what con artists do they convince you through emotion and charisma and subtlety that they know something they don't and the problem for you usually is that you don't know either so you sort of have to trust that this is, this is the horrible part about being ignorant and trust me I feel this way every single time I talk to a doctor I hate the fact that I have to go to someone I don't really know if like some types of um, like treatments like if this makes sense whatsoever because I don't know anything about physiology and like all these things so they can sell me snake oil for all I care uh, because I, I can't evaluate it and you are in the same thing and so if you want to figure out if someone really knows their stuff either you would have to look at the results which is sort of hard when you're dealing with software developers or you have to have a second opinion someone who really knows their stuff who can evaluate whether or not this is a good person, this is a good software developer or not because trust me when I say this guys it's really easy to spot a faker or, or, or a poser if you know what to look for. Have a great day!